Direct Motion Technologies. Every day of our human life, we are awake, we are alive, we are experiencing this ourselves in physical matter, and it feels so vividly real. I mean, I can feel this couch, I can feel my ghost, you know, I feel all of this. We often associate reality by what's happening right now, our sense of self, and our current situations, and what we think of ourselves, our ego, and how we view ourselves in society. You are here right now, in this moment. You are experiencing this right now. What's happening right now, you are experiencing it. Like just feel the moment. You are in it. Feel your feet touch the ground, your clothes touch your skin. Think about this. When we dream, each moment within that dream seems so real. All the faces that we see, the people that we hear in that dream, seem real. Real, real the pain that we feel in dreams definitely feels real so you're in a dream in your dream you're at a store and you see people you see a uh, guy in a red shirt you hear people talking and then you wake up then you go have breakfast at a restaurant you see people you hear people you see a guy in a blue shirt you know so we experience one reality then we experience another reality right after that also feels so real. But then we assume that one is real and one is not. of your body as a machine and your machine comes equipped with a set of mechanical devices or sense organs other names for these mechanical devices can be your eyes ears nose tongue and body tissue those are your five senses and those are the reasons why you believe you exist or giving you the sensation that you exist in this physical world our senses act as a window to our external world so I can see because my sense of, of sight is telling me that I exist or that I exist somewhere between the environment I am in. Your body's machine sense organs detect stimuli such as light, mechanical pressure, or chemical molecules and converts them into neural impulses that are transmitted to the brain. Now once that information reaches the brain, then you feel the sensation of sight, smell, taste, or feeling. So I can see the light waves, those light waves then come into my eyes. The eyes, mechanical devices, they then transmit that information to my brain. And I can now know that I am experiencing this, what I see here, or I can hear myself because my ears are transmitting those vibrations into sound. Let's say that you live with three dogs. Now, typically in that situation, the house will begin to develop an odor. And after living with three dogs for a while, you no longer smell that odor. But when guests come over, they can certainly smell the odor. The odor molecules are still in the air. Your mechanical device just reduced the responsiveness to the odor. So it's there. It doesn't mean it's not there or it's not existing. 
you just can't pick it up as much because your machine has adapted to the smell to pay attention to newer stimuli. Now, another example is when you jump into a cold swimming pool, then after a while, that pool no longer seems cold. You know, you jump in and you're all shivering, but then after a while, guess what? You're not cold anymore and the temperature has not even changed. So this phenomenon is known as sensory adaptation. And think about this, you can have a stuffy nose and when this happens, your receptor is not functioning properly. Therefore, you are not getting the most of your external environment. I want you to fully understand how your body and brain operate and then you will see that you are the creator of the world all around you and everything is happening inside of you. Everything is vibrating out there and your mechanical devices are receiving all of this stimuli and is converting it into electrical chemical signals that travel up to the brain. Thus displaying your current state of being, your current sense of being, your current feeling of existence. 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 Another important phenomenon that you need to understand is habituation. Habituation revolves around how we respond to stimulus that we are frequently exposed to. You know, our brain is programmed to pay more attention to changes in our environment rather than stimuli that remains constant. We apply habituation to friends, family, and loved ones as well. An example is when we pay more attention to new friends rather than old friends or a new toy. You may also pay more attention and value compliments from a stranger rather than your husband or wife. When we are being exposed to the same stimuli, it will no longer excite us, but new stimuli always excites us and causes us to respond. When people divorce or have an affair, habituation is taking place along with other variables. People say that they fall out of love, but you can also say that constant exposure to their partners causes a decreased response to them, which means that the excitement once felt for their partner fades away. An affair may take place soon after because a new lover will always excite more than the previous. There is a way to fix habituation towards your partner. If your partner never wants to grow, improve, or become better and remain the same, habituation is more likely to take place. But if we are constantly growing, learning new things, always improving, always changing for the better, we will remain exciting to our partners and habituation is less likely to happen because we are always learning new things, always doing new things, always becoming better, always becoming more new, be successful, always improve. The age-old question is, if a tree falls in the middle of the woods and no one is around to hear it, will it still make a sound? Let's break the question down. What is sound? How do you define sound? Do you define sound as a sensation? If so, then sound requires receptor cells or a mechanical device such as an ear to create a form of noise. If you don't define sound as a sensation, then all it is is pressure waves in the air. Sound waves travel through the air, entering our mechanical device which we call ears. Our ears then transmit those vibrations up to the brain. The brain then reads and converts those signals into sound. Get it? The sound transmitted will vary depending on the wavelength. I'm going to give you a few scenarios. The first one is you're in the woods and a tree standing 20 feet from you falls. The fall creates a vibration. The vibration then travels up to your ear creating sound. Now a set of ears has to be present in order to turn that mechanical vibration into sound. Otherwise it just remains vibration. vibration. No sensation will be created meaning no sound will be created. New scenario. A tree falls in the woods, this time you're standing 20 miles from it. The fall creates vibration, 
the vibration travels as far as it can go, never reaching your ear, which means no sound is ever created or developed, and the tree will not create sound if no one is there to hear it. Another scenario, suppose you're on a hill and a firework goes off five miles away from you. You will see it pop first, then you will hear the boom right after, so it'll be like, Due to the distance, there will be a delay from the time you see a pop to the time the sound waves travel to your eardrums, resulting in sound. What your eyes receive are light waves. What your ears receive are sound waves. The sound waves travel fast, but not as fast as the speed of light. So you see it pop, and then you hear the sound of the boom. Now suppose you're on a hill and another firework goes off uh, 60 miles away from you. You will see it pop, but you will never hear it. So it'd be like, you're so far that the sound vibrations can't reach your ears, so you don't hear it. Our bodies are receiving vibrations and transmitting them into sensations, giving us the perception of our current reality. This is a new way to view our environment and our physical body and how they go hand in hand. My name is John Martinez. I am the CEO of Direct Motion Technologies. We are a full service audio, visual, and event technology company. We set up all the AV production for conferences, seminars, concerts, social events, parties, weddings, conventions, corporate events, you name it. So in my profession, I've studied how audio works, how light works, how radio waves work. I've studied all of this and I've come to the conclusion that reality is an illusion because how sound waves operate and how the light right here, you know, it's just, it's amazing. And the better I know this, the better service I can provide to our clients. Direct Motion Technology. We always have to be aware of the environment that we are in and how the equipment that we provide is going to function in that environment. So we've set up productions in all types of environments, in small rooms, big rooms, no rooms, indoors, outdoors, both indoors and outdoors, no lighting, a lot of lighting. So every time we set up a production, there's all types of variables we have to take into consideration so we can make everything look and sound nice. When we set up for a band, there's the vocals and the instruments and everything has to be balanced just right so it sounds good to your ears, you know, music to your ears. So everything has to be nice and crisp. The more I learn about this, the more I understand myself and the environment that I am in, my reality. The more I learn about this, the more control I have here in the physical world. I love what I do and I'm fascinated with what I do. I love the way the sound works, I love the way the bass works, I love the way frequency works. Most people think feedback is bad, you know, and I'm talking about audio feedback when you have a mic real close to a speaker, you're going to get feedback. Now, that is sound going into sound, being, being copied into sound. Just by listening to feedback, you know that reality is an illusion. I mean, the more I learn about it, it just really, it just really excites me because I love what I do for a living. I mean, what I do for a living just fascinates me. I'm excited to wake up every day and do what I do. And, and that's just, that just excites me. That goes along with everything that I'm saying that the reality we are creating is happening within us, but also we are creating the reality that we want and we can create the reality that we want. That we want. The universe is great. We are living in an intelligent universe. Now, when I mention universe, I don't just mean outer space and the, the stars and the galaxy out in the distance. 
I am referring to our inner world, the world right in front of us right now, the world that is around us all right now. This is our universe. Our human bodies, our machines contain five sensations that pick up stimuli from the outside world. Those impulses from these senses then travel to the brain, which broadcasts what we see and feel. You see, when you start to realize that it is you that turns light waves into sight and sound waves into sound and it is from your tongue that you know pizza tastes good, only then will you know that you are the creator of your world. Everything that you see, touch, feel exists in your mind. Everyone that you know exists in your mind. The entire external world is happening inside of your mind. Just as when you are dreaming, everything that you are dreaming of is happening inside of your mind. The thoughts and perceptions that you have exist in your mind. Your internal and external worlds are one of the same. We can't have this environment without having our bodies. We can't have our bodies without having this environment for our bodies to be in. By environment, I mean all of this, the space that we are in and out of, the environment that is all around us, the environment that is around us that is made of atoms which is everything our bodies are telling us that the environment exists through receiving frequencies in vivid ways we we receive these these vibrations through our mechanical devices and this device then broadcasts this, this all of this, 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 this now our this. body our machine is sending electrical chemical signals to the brain displaying our current reality our body, our brain is made of atoms. We've established that atoms are just pure energy which virtually do not exist, so our brains don't exist. So what does not exist gives us the perception of existence. Now, this must mean that our thoughts and sense of self must be happening somewhere other than within our physical form. Think about that. Where is this thought of yourself coming from? Where? Where are you thinking that you think? You know, like, you think you exist, but where is this thought coming from? We think we exist because we have brains, but those brains don't exist. So what's giving us a perception of existence really does not exist. Reality is an illusion. Because we are the creators of the reality we experience, we can create the reality we want. We can create the life we've always wanted. We can achieve all our goals. We can broadcast anything we want into existence. We can broadcast anything we want, anything we want into existence. Into existence. We, we can broadcast any, anything we want into existence. Into existence. Into existence. Into existence. Into existence. Experience, what you just heard, what you just saw is all coming from either one of your five senses. So there's a sound like reverb which is when you're in a big room these vibrations are bouncing off the walls ricocheting to your ear and they reach your ear at different times it might be just a slight difference but those different times you get the sound of reverb so let's say i'm in a big room and the sound waves that i'm producing is bouncing off the walls and coming back to my ears at different times which is how i am able to hear reverb 